of um, all of the uh, revenue that is made up. And if you'll flip a couple more pages, you'll, uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, on page 12, in fact, general fund under the Roman numeral 5, general fund revenues, you'll see all of the different revenue sources that uh, the city has. Um, so the digest is a portion. As you go down, you can see uh, licenses, business licenses, franchise fees, um, flipping a page. You can see uh, fines and forfeitures, which is there. So um, what I'd like to say is that the, uh, the millage rate is a very important component of the budget. It is a needed component as tax fees go, uh, but it is not, um, it's, it's not the central component. We, we have other sources of revenue that the city has, uh, which is why a point that I made, and, and this is where I'll hush you in just a second. That's appropriate tax. Okay. That's regular digest current is 260. Right. Anticipated collection. Yeah. Anticipated that we were collecting from here. Right. So one more point to make, and then I'll entertain any questions that anyone has. Um, there were uh, some articles that ran over the past couple of weeks because the assessors were late in submitting the numbers. Local governments were put in a bind as far as collecting money was concerned. Typically, uh, you know, when you set a millage in August. Tax bills go out in September, and money starts coming in uh, in October, November, and December. Well, that didn't happen this time because we got the digest so late. So uh, bills are going out. They'll go about out by November 20, and those folks with uh, escrow accounts and the like will still be able to count it in this year uh, if, uh, if those uh, taxes are paid here. I think the extension period to pay the runs into next year. So some local governments may see a delay in their receipts of up to three months. Uh, and in fact, I believe Valdosta is entertaining a tax anticipation note. Some other governments are entertaining lines of credit. One of the things that uh, I've talked with the council about is because uh, there has been conservative budgeting on the part of the council and the department heads, we have been able to uh, have enough in liquid cash reserve to where I do not anticipate uh, either of those options needing to be entertained by the city of Hayhira. I, I think the fiscal condition of the general fund is strong enough to be able to withstand uh, the delay in uh, revenue uh, up until that time. That is not to say that the ad valorem taxes are not an essential component of the budget because they are. We need the revenue, but we can get by for, for the next few months until that money comes in. So um, that was the last major point. There's a lot of information in here. We made these copies of the budget. Uh, if anybody wants an electronic version, uh, I can email that to folks. If there are uh, questions about how the budget is considered, we had some of those at 1130 uh, and how it's actually laid out. We can talk about that too, or, or how millage and property taxes are calculated. We can get into that too. Um, that's what the purpose of the public hearing is. So it's really informal. Uh, uh, and uh, the, the one next Thursday will be more formal. We'll have an agenda, and the council will, will consider the millage rate at the end of that third and last public hearing. But these two are, are just really question and answer time. So uh, those in attendance, anything, uh, anything to... To ask about or okay, I'll, I'll yep. start it off. The budget, as, as, as you see it here, was put together and tentatively approved by the council before we knew what the uh, tax digest was going to be. Right. So the numbers here do not include the windfall from the uh, tax digest. And what is the dollar volume of that windfall? Uh, the increase in the tax digest, uh, according to the levy, is $38,758. That is not reflected in this budget. So the city council could 
decrease the millage rate and erase that. What's it? You, I think you stated one hundred ninety dollars per hundred thousand as uh, value property, correct? That was what you were talking about earlier yeah. this this month, uh, earlier today. I, I don't have the exact amount. No, that's what was in yeah. the paper, and okay. that's what we handed out. One hundred ninety on one hundred thousand dollars of assessment. Okay. And so, uh, if the council, so be it, could vote down by dropping the millage rate, that property tax increase since it is not reflected in the budget, uh, looks like it's fairly well, you know, fairly well put together by the mayor and the city manager. Mm -hmm. So without that money, the budget holds, holds tight. With that money, it's windfall money. Where would that money go? That money would go into the surplus? Uh, the, uh, the thing that I want to make sure the council understands, of course, reducing the millage is always an option that the council has in any budgeting cycle and we've been blessed over these past two to three years uh, through conservative budgeting to, to be able to end each fiscal year in the black. It wasn't the case uh, during the first five or six years that I was here but um, I, I will say that even though there is a number that was turned in by the tax commissioner and the assessors that exceeds what was estimated and included in this budget, you've also got a fairly aggressive fines and forfeiture figure of 665000 uh, that's included within the fiscal year 16 budget. I was confident in that figure. I still am confident in that figure if it was left the same. But what I would recommend <coughs> is that um, in recalculating the amount of increased ad valorem tax offset a decrease within fines and forfeitures of a corresponding amount. Um, the uh, police department will be shorthanded next year. We have one officer that is uh, going overseas uh, and we have uh, other officers that are in a state of flux. I am confident and have received assurances from the police chief that uh, that will not affect collection. However, it's the job of staff to be conservative in estimations. So in lieu of a millage rate rollback, that would be the alternative that I would recommend would be a corresponding back down in estimated fines and forfeitures. But it of course is up to the council uh, as far as uh, what alternatives that you want to take. I'm going to tell you, I can certainly support that so that we don't put so much pressure on our public so uh, the other thing we're well, looking at, that is a projection. That is not right. Absolutely. Do I would not know want to put what's going to happen in two Undue next pressure time. on them to have to collect. Right. Well, let's, um, let's go back so one more thing, Mr. Mason. Uh, we have had just past October an increase in water. We got 3% mm -hmm. on water. Right. People on Social Security is not getting, there's no in, uh, increase in Social Security next year for the people right. in the city on Social Security. Right. But senior and citizens will not realize that 3% increase. Well, granted, um, but we're talking additional taxes. We need to step back a little bit and looking at the budget, you know. Uh, but again, you're looking at something that's projected, Ralph. You don't have that well, in your it's hand. It's always projected. It's the nah. budget's always projected. Yeah, but the way so you got a windfall right but here. But the way now. you've been told, you the way have they done this yeah. year is all been messed up. Been. I'm not well, taking yes, a chance. Yeah. No, you don't. What? You don't know that you have a windfall because you've got to live the year first to make sure that you. People have the windfall. People are going to pay the taxes in November, December, and January. That's I want right. to say there have been years we have not collected all that the tax commissioners right. have estimated. Well, you don't and know that you don't collect it all, and you don't know that there wouldn't be some. If, if, if I were to be thinking about uh, rolling back tax, I would rather live the year expenditure-wise if no emergencies or nothing else comes up because you haven't spent your money yet. You don't know what those expenditures are going to be. We budgeted, but you don't know what's going to come up during the year. At the end of the year, if we have that 38000 I might consider it, but not, not in, okay. in, in, since we set these things in arrears. Well, absolutely. absolutely not. That's not well, good business. That, no. It's not good business. It's not a good business tax overtaxing people like Lowndes County is rolling back their taxes. Absolutely, but okay. when do you roll back that tax route? What do you mean, when do you roll We're back? talking about this projected a, budget. We, every year we do a projected budget and we, right. and we find a way to fit it. 
That's right. Okay, this is a windfall. There's all of a sudden, hey, you got some, here's a budget. All of a sudden now, oh, we've got $38,000 laying out here that we might be able to use. No, you don't have 38000 You won't have 38000 Listen, Ralph, here's, here's how January. budgets work in these situations. This is how it works in government-type budgets. You're not going to have that 38000 until the end of the year. This year. That's right. The, no, yeah. the end of, no, next year. Next year. No, no, this no. is Avalor. a projected... This is Avalorum tax. This no. comes in, they pay it when? In November? It's going to be due November 20th, Some right? November, but the deadline's not until That's right. next year. That's right. But you've got to collect your revenues, and then you have to have your expenditures. And we're saying that as the year goes on, you're not going to know that you're going to have a $38,000 windfall until the end of next year's budget cycle. You're not going to know you have 38000 if we don't collect as much and if something comes up to where expenditures have to increase for some emergency reason, then that, that 38000 could be gone. But so what not. you're saying is if you cut back that 38000 now... That's 38000 that we're going to pay for this year, not next year. No. Yes. We're paying it. <coughs> the My tax bill will be due... due uh, what, around 1st of December, they're going to mail them out the 20th. And that's money that we will spend this, this coming fiscal year, correct? Okay. Yeah, correct? but it's all due, it's right. all due by the by j end of January. That's right. So you're going to know that's what right. you have by but the end of January. But expenditures continue on throughout the year, Ralph. But the, you don't know that you're You have a budget without that in there. Well, every year we come up with a budget. That's right. And every year we meet the budget. That's right. We adjust the budget as right. time goes on. That's right. So this thirty-eight thousand dollars is a windfall it's compared to this budget on just the ad valorem part uh, of yes, the budget. Thirty-eight thousand dollars. That's right. right. But do you know that you're going to collect everything else within the budget? All the other revenues? But you, you don't know, know that every year. You don't know. That's right. And that's exactly. why you. That's why at the end of the year we do a budget adjustment. And uh, that's why if you do a a line item zero based budget. In, in a situation, small situation like this, then at the end of the year, you're having to adjust your budget tremendously um, no, uh, to, if, if it doesn't budget. work. We have never adjusted. We've the never adjusted. We know. I said tremendously. Yeah. We've adjusted the budget, but not tremendously. And every year we do. We, well, that's that's normal. Right. Every city does. That's a normal process of a budget. There's, and two, even if you get it by the end of the year, we got to vote on something and have it set by next week. But and you're not? taking the chance between next week and you vote on it to the end of the year if you're going to get that money. That's right. Well, if you're going to get the you, you know, know you're going to get the money. You know you're going to get that uh, <laughs> extra you money. You get that get extra. You might not money. collect it. There's some that you might We're not collect. We're running on the last okay. year. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm the, uh, the opportunity that's presented within these two public hearings is to get input from the public. Uh, there there yeah. will be opportunity next Thursday for the council to, to debate it and, and talk about it to you after receipt of all uh, input is, is, is can. Yes, ma'am. Can I ask you not to laugh at my questions? It may not, you know, I'm trying to understand this right now. Um, the budget that you put together is a draft, it's projection. So remember we were talking about the department needs and everything like that earlier. What kind of additional there's a there's a buffer, right? What kind of additional money, what formula did you use to come up with, okay, this department projects that they require this amount. How much more have you? You're talking about in operating, uh, as far as operating estimations. Uh, typically, and, and this was covered uh, a little bit at 1130, um, the, uh, the departments uh, will, uh, using their conservative budgeting, uh, estimate over the course of the next fiscal year what they need uh, for uh, salaries, for benefits and equipment and operation uh, throughout the throughout the coming year. <coughs> there uh, there is some opportunities for some marginal increases that are there based on historical trend analysis, and we uh, we talked about in your budget, and this is on any given page. Um, you see uh, a trend of where the previous three years were in terms of a given line item and then where the current budget amount is and then uh, we don't have year-to-date actual but that actually is is received by the council every month in the form of a revenue and expenditure report 
So administration will take those numbers and, and then adjust them if needed mm -hmm. and, and then recommend that uh, to the council. In uh, about the first five or six years, the, the cuts were pretty severe because of economic uh, differences. Uh, I think this year is about the first year that uh, we did not make any significant cuts to any department request. So pretty much everything that the departments requested this year, I'm pleased to say we were able to fund. Uh, in looking at trend analysis, you can see on those individual line items uh, if there are any that have gone up or any that have gone down. Uh, but typically, we try and run very close to what uh, previous year's expenditures have been. So if there's a you know market increase over what was requested versus what was spent, as it's shown in this budget, um, we, we ask for explanation in that and, uh, and, and usually receive it uh, properly from the department heads. So this is my understanding. When you do the budget, you're looking at that year. The coming year. The coming fiscal year. Right. That's right. Not beyond it. Hmm. Not what you're into right now. That's right. Right? Well, so we, we do look at this year. We look at the accumulated uh, year to date. Um, okay, so is that, the, is that the amount you're talking about? Year to date actual. Yeah, those figures are not in here. But any revenue and expenditure report you'll get in the packets mm -hmm. corresponds to this budget. So anything that's accumulated up to this point within those line items is included in the revenue and expenditure budget. And we use that to forecast for, for the coming fiscal year too. So anything left over at the end of the year, what happens? Uh, if there is a, a, a revenue that exceeds expenditure, which for the past handful of years that has been the case, in fact I think we've only had one year in the red, um, it is turned into the general fund operating account and uh, is carried over to next year. I know you said earlier that you, you're suggesting, the staff is suggesting to the council and mayor to hold the rate the way it is. Yes. And I think I had a response, is there a possibility of lowering it? The council has that option before them mm -hmm. if they want to do that. If they want to roll it back, they can. Because there was, there was two of us there and before the meeting started, he said, well, I'm for increasing it. Who, who's and it? Mr. Raker, oh, 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 I yeah. think he went yeah. out to get some tests before Lisa hit the button. Yeah, the council he can't said, do that. Yeah, we were talking about that. We like, we know that, but his ideas of how money is, how the money is spent, there was a disparity in that. He, so he says, well, we need to look at sewers. I mean, do you remember that? Mm -hmm. And that's not a part of what we're talking about. You know, there's all the things that the city needs, but we need to focus, like, on the budget and the millage. And I had never been in a room where both of them would talk about it at the same time. You're talking about the general fund account, not the right. proprietary right. fund. There was a lot of discussion that centered around sources and uses of funds, yeah. if y'all will recall, uh, in the fall of last year, <coughs> and what spent out of the general fund and what spent out of the proprietary fund and how the two are kept separate. Yeah. Um, Another conversation at the meeting was, well, all these different things, like I have my, my assessment, and all these different things that are asked of us to pay an assessment, he said, oh, no, it's the school board, this and that, but hey, Hira is only asking for, I think he said $318. That is nothing, except to people who can't pay it. Okay. So that's what we need to look at. And I listed, you know, I have a list of things. Medicare premiums, you started talking about that. Premiums have increased. Supplemental premiums have increased. The water rate just increased October, and we're coming for another one January. That's increased. <laughs> we're not talking about the amount, right? Just the, the amount of things that are coming at you. Uh, annual, okay, no increase in cost of living. You got all these increases. Social Security and new, no increase. Got to look at that too. How you know our population? I know how it affects me. My mother doesn't have that discount that she had on the water because now she lives with me. So we're using more water, but we don't have a discount. 
How many senior citizens have received the discount? About seventy. About seventy. So it, it has been it has been used. Of yeah. course, that's open to anyone. And that thirteen dollar base rate increase and the three percent uh, automatic increase will not affect those senior citizens as well. So those on fixed income, at least for that portion, will not uh, will not have. But you're talking okay. about because that, that senior citizen discount has not impacted your bill because it's not her bill, it's your bill, right. and she, even though she lives with you, is what you're saying. Right, I'm saying that there is a discount. Right, but, but you're not, we're not, you yeah, don't, we don't, it's not it, it, helping your household, exactly. is what you're saying, even yeah. though your mother is living with you. Yeah. Okay. And so we're still using the same amount of water or more that she used with a discount. Right. But now she lives with me. Right. And I'm not going to tell her, turn the water off. You know, right. and also now the newest thing yesterday, I'm disputing a uh, medical bill, and I said I'm paid. I when I come, I pay it. I'm there. I'm done. She goes, oh, let me check it out. She goes, oh, no, that's a facility fee now that you'll have to pay when you go to your doctor. So I'm paying copays. My mother is paying her copays on medication. You know, and I'm I'm not looking at this just me me me. How many times is that happening outside of twice. me? Twice anyway, with the audience here. Okay, <laughs> so I'm saying all these fees are coming at us. Great, we're going to hold the millage rate. Great, but my taxes still increase, and with everything else, so I don't get the three percent. And I think he made a comment. We were talking about the budget and how. I had a conversation with somebody yesterday, but we were talking about the budget. He has a corporate understanding of budget. I have a military understanding of budget. And then there's a city understanding of how the budget operates. And I think the statement I told him, we had a conversation with a guy was walking his dog, and he says, I asked him, are you going to the meeting? Are you going to the hearing? And he goes, no, well, I know how that works. You know, they're going to pad it. They're going to do this. And... <coughs> You know, if we don't, then we, at, we we don't get more next year. So I know how that works. And I'm like, that, for me, we talked about it, and it started, you know, I didn't take that as an understanding of how the budget works, because we, it, it gets parred down after that, you know. So it's just people's understanding of it, people's situation, and then the millage, property tax. That's just my take on it, and I can't, you know, I understand a little bit corporate, because he said, what we do is that at the end of the year, we have a big party. So, I know that's not happening. We don't do that. Yeah, oh, I know that's not happening. We, do. we give our big bonuses at the end of the year, yeah. so don't sit there and we don't do I have a question, actually two questions. Historically, in 2005 and 2009, this exact same thing happened, and it was rolled back. And the world didn't end. We did not roll back the millage in 2009. Hmm? Rolled it back we, we rolled it back, and that that wasn't the term rollback is when you uh, roll it back to account for the appreciation of the digest. We cut the millage in 2012 to 4.75, and that in the previous nine years was the only time that was done. Um, so before 2006, I can't. You know, I can go back in the records and look, but from 2006 to 2015, the mill rate was cut once from um, 5.38 to 4.75. And what year was that? It was cut to 4.75 in 2012. And it is the lowest millage in Lowndes County, uh, with the exception of Dasher. Is the number of, uh, I know we roughly have in our water and sewer about 1,250 accounts. How close is that to the number of people that are going to bear the cost of this uh, increase because due to the uh, digest increase? It, uh, you know, it depends on home ownership. Right. I mean, obviously, you know, renters are going to realize theoretically some sort of increase within what they're paying based on property tax increases. But, sure, indirectly, right. Uh, right, but mm -hmm. home ownership is, is primarily you know, who the ad valorem taxes affect. And, and property owners, commercial property owners and, and the like. So mm -hmm. so that... So uh, they would be roughly 
roughly the same. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, the biggest well, impact is going to be, that has gonna be more than one area. building or whatever. That's going to be the biggest impact. Right. So, and and I'm not. This is not. I'm yes. just simply. Uh, you talk about people's understanding of budget. One of you know one thing that I like to do is break it down to brass tacks. And this is not a conclusion by saying this at all. But just just breaking it down to about thirty thirty one bucks per property owner is what we're looking at here. So rolling it back to to offset thirty one dollars uh, is really it, it, that's that's really what you're looking at for a year. And I got that by dividing thirty eight thousand seven hundred fifty eight by twelve hundred and fifty. Eleven fifty houses. It's we got eleven hundred fifty water bills uh, water meters right. So, no, Let me get your twelve. We have twelve. Yeah. Oh, the twelve. Oh. And that's not. And again, I want to. I want to underscore the fact what I said in the beginning. That's not. To, that's not a conclusion. That's not to say one one side is wrong or the other on the argument of a roll of a possible rollback. But when you're make, and this is something I've mentioned in previous in meetings. You know, we 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 look at thirty nine thousand dollars almost, and we say, well, that is that is kind of a windfall. That's a lot of money. But that is not. Well, uh, can I can I finish? Can I, that's okay. my number. Can I finish? Okay. You you, you mm -hmm. said your piece, and I'm actually even agreed with you by saying you don't realize that. But I agreed with you. That's a windfall. It's a lot of money. Thirty nine thousand dollars. But at the same time, what we're really looking at is uh, is about a thirty thirty one dollar per property owner increase for the year. For the year of 2016. Not. That's not against your argument. Not for anyone's. Let's say $50 dollars increase in my property tax. This is not the number. You're arguing that you can use that number. There's an example I think that's given. Yeah, that's on that video right there. You just said it'd be $39. Don't change it. Don't change the number. This is last year's number. Touch me and don't change the number. You said that three times. It's on the video. You said it. Now you're changing that. What? That's $39,000. That's what you said. Now you ch now you I, I want it on the video that okay. you changed well, I your number. Said, I, I don't know if I said that. But you this said is, it. Yeah, but this is don't forget July June or July budget. This is before that happened. 2016. Okay. Yeah, yeah. we don't have a comment. <laughs> 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 no, you didn't you 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 flip flop on this. This is 39. You said. You said the example on that video right there. I can just say I can just say that 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 I've seen these property tax increases right up front. My mother's properties. Um, she had four properties that went up almost 200 percent in value. 200, which it almost more than doubles her tax bill. Her, her, and, and, and we're not going to be increasing our rent <laughs> on those properties. And that's my mother's livelihood. She doesn't, that's what she lives off of. So if there's anybody in here who's, who's, who's impacted, not me directly, but I've got a mother who I look after her properties, help her look after her properties, and it is, we've, we've you know, talking about going and uh, appealing, we got a lot of appeals down there ourselves, but I have no, no confidence that there's going to be much of an appeal on it, that her property taxes are more than doubled in one year. And some of them went up almost 200 percent. In other okay. words, that's not double. That's <coughs> the right. But what I'd like to do is let Mr. Miller finish his question. That he was asking what I hear about his property taxes. That's what I was about to ask. Oh, yes, in, in answer to uh, oh, no, the no, question, no, no. Uh, I ain't making my no, question. I'm whining and weeping. I'm whining and weeping. Our fiscal year, city of May, our fiscal year is, ends when? Uh, it's calendar, so it goes from January 1 to December 3rd. Does it look like we're going to have any money left over from this year? I'm hoping that uh, we'll, we'll be in the black at the end of the year. Yes, sir. Is it that close? Um, no. It looks like you might have ten thousand. It it could be. Typically, it runs uh, it it runs somewhere around sixty to eighty, somewhere right in there. Yes, sir. Yeah. And we're just talking about this. Uh, if we leave the millage as it is, it'll give it'll cost uh, sixty thousand, wasn't it? Uh, I think the number was about thirty-eight thousand. Thirty-eight thousand. If I'm not mistaken. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. 
But you expect, um, you no, know, if we did all right this year. I'm hoping uh, at the end of the year when the audit comes in, yes, sir, that we'll still be in the black we, we and, and turn that around. Five-sixths of the way. Yes, sir. That's right. Now, but remember this. I want to bring up this point that... Christmas is coming. That's true. That's true. <laughs> but remember what he said about our ability to handle this, this um, uh, difference in our collections. Whereas everybody else is having to go out there and borrow money, which costs them more money, we're not. Because we have those dollars and we have saved some dollars over the year to put us in a position and we're going to, have to, around handle, 60, left. to handle these types of things without going and having to borrow money from the bank and having to pay interest on that money. So, um, you know, you know that, that's one of the reasons why, I mean, Mr. C, you did, you did budgets down at um, Ballast Tech for years. Yeah, I mean, and, I mean and you know, you know exactly, yeah. I, I work with those, those, those higher education budgets as well. And we all know how important it is for us to be conservative and at the end of the year have something left over to take care of those things like this that we'd always had to rely on. Because if you always bank yourself on ending the year, it's, it never worked out. <laughs> Any year that we have tried to make a budget in higher education, it, it, it has always come back to bite you if you don't leave a little leeway there. And then use that leeway to do those I things. I back on what we, we did 30 years ago now, 32 years ago. Right. And I'm, I'm amazed that the place is still standing. Right. Because the way we always met it, we didn't do it. Right. Which I recommend for everybody every once in a while, including the city of Hay Sure. But well, if, if you look like you might have 60000 left now, and you're only talking about it going up, what, 38000 Yes, sir. We're in pretty good shape. Well, we, we put uh, about a quarter of a million dollars uh, about two or three years ago into reserves uh, for another CD. And uh, so now the city is up, I believe, in the general fund to about half a million uh, in rainy day. Uh, and of course, with an operating budget in the general Let's fund... Let's see if it rains. Yes, sir, it may. Mm -hmm. But with an operating budget of around $1.7 million, um, you know, you obviously want a little bit of carryover for operating days in case something happens to, to have that. Since 2007, 2008, when we had a, had a pretty good recession that cut yeah, back uh, that's right. um, sales tax, we were able to survive because right. of that rainy day fund. Right. No, and we didn't take the rainy day fund out. We, we, never, we never busted a CD. Right. We never well, busted. That's good. That's, that's good. We just we managed the money good. That's good. We we scammed. Scammed. That's good. We scammed. But, but recessions come around about every seven, eight years. And, and I, I would encourage everyone at this time to remember to attend our retreat in <laughs> February uh, where we will talk about um, uh, what? fiscal fiscal charting uh, for the next several years and we don't go anywhere on a physical on a retreat here, do we? Uh, no, sir. We go to the community center. Okay. Um, but we do. But we we do. We do eat pretty good. So if anybody <laughs> wants to, to uh, throw <laughs> on a feed bag, mm -hmm. Lambs County went somewhere. No, they didn't. It was the city of Valdosta. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, the city of Valdosta took their retreat somewhere else, and they are among the people who will be enjoying the windfall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. We we don't do that up, up this way. But yeah, uh, this is Savannah. That was my other question. How does how is the county going to do it? <coughs> how is how are they able to roll back? Mm -hmm. Well, I can't say for sure. I can tell you what they did. But I've heard mm -hmm. they were planning on it anyway. I can tell you what they did three years ago. They laid off still about the, still twenty-five they can individuals. Do it. Yeah. They, been, uh, Some of which have been there over 20 years. You know, so that's that's what the county has done. Well, it's happening I'm, everywhere. I'm, I'm not here to question, you know, another government's management, uh, but I will say we have not had to lay off staff in Hayhira, uh, and you know we feel good about that. But uh, if if they're able to roll it back and and meet their commitments with service delivery, you know, more power to them. But um, but at any rate, I. Uh, 
wanted to not not to wrap up, but are there any other questions? Uh, there will be another public hearing next one, Thursday. One, one more, and that yes, is we have a, a going to save money next year by having one less person in a certain department, but yet we think it's going to cost more because the fines and forfeitures that that person would have been responsible for gathering may not be as much. Would it be possible to hire someone in midterm to go after fines and forfeitures if it seems to be lagging? We we can always talk about that uh, as far as the chief's personnel uh, obligations, and and that's something I can bring up to him as we look at at uh, charting for next year. One of the things that the chief will tell you that he's committed to do is to make sure that protection of the city is never uh, held back at the expense of any type of uh, traffic enforcement elsewhere uh, within the jurisdiction. Which means that we're always going to have an officer on call ready to answer any type of emergency in town. Ideally a two officer coverage sometimes, but that's never going to be held at the expense of any other type of uh, activity that the city may have, be it on the interstate or anywhere else. So, you know, if temporary personnel is brought on board, that's certainly something um, that we can entertain for next year. And, uh, you know, I, I can mention it to the chief, and if he wants to uh, come to the council with that, that's something we can look at. Well, that's a possibility that has not yet been explored. Not, not at this time. I, I would just recommend, as, and, and this, is, this was the only point I was making, from a fines and forfeiture standpoint, to be conservative uh, is, is to be uh, prudent. Um, the city of Pejara is, uh, is not uh, of the opinion, at least since I've been here, to rely uh, on any type of set figure for fines and forfeitures, and I think that is a very important policy goal that our council has carried forward. Uh, obviously, we want to make sure people are obeying the law within Pejara. Uh, but, uh, you know, from a revenue standpoint, that's not the goal of, of uh, the police department. I wasn't suggesting No, 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 I understand what you were saying. You're going to have some, not going to have somebody to, to chase folks. I said, well, if the half, half the year goes by, hire somebody. We might put the chief out there uh, <laughs> if we need to. Yeah, so. They won't be being paid either. <laughs> I didn't suggest to put the chief anywhere now. <laughs> no, it wouldn't, wouldn't come from you, no, sir. Any other questions that we can entertain? Well, thank you all so much for coming tonight. I would encourage everyone to come.